Hannah, I want to ask you this. So the National Transportation Safety Board, the NTSB, is investigating the crash and the collapse. What can you tell us about that? That's right. They say they've had a team here since 6 a.m. this morning starting this investigation alongside the Coast Guard. What they did tell us is that the ship that ran into the bridge is owned by a company out of Singapore, and they are coordinating with officials in Singapore to figure out exactly how this happened. Other than that, though, the information about this investigation very limited at this point, and they noted that investigations like this often do take some time. Okay, Hannah, on the scene of that bridge collapse in Baltimore, thank you for that update. And that bridge collapse worries many who drive across our bridges here in town, often daily, to get to work or transport goods. And our Lisa Balick is looking into the concerns right here in our area. Lisa? Yeah, in Bridge City, there are hundreds of thousands of drivers who cross the 12 bridges every single day. Now, again, these bridges crossing the Willamette and the Columbia here, like the bridge here that's going to be replaced. Earthquakes like this one here are more what we're worried about, but ship crashes can happen. First, the good news. Ships the size of the one that crashed into a support beam in Baltimore do not travel through the Willamette or the Columbia near the Interstate Bridge. But there is potential for barges or smaller ships to run into a local bridge. Motorboats and sailboats have done that through the years. I mean, it could happen here. Something like this can happen in any situation when you have a ship that's out of control. We're always aware of the dangers on the river. Many of our local state and county bridges are rated at best in fair condition, but they are inspected regularly by maintenance workers and major full inspections done every couple of years. We have safety inspectors out there every two years. We close the uh, interstate bridge, for example, for nights for a week. And we have safety inspectors, engineers up there doing fracture critical inspections to make sure everything is safe on the bridge. We don't keep these bridges open if they are unsafe. As for keeping an eye out to prevent ship collisions, Oda says that's happening. We have uh, workers 24-7 on the interstate bridge that are watching the river at all times to see if there are any problems out there on the river that we need to be careful about, to see if there are any, any ships that are in danger out there on the river. There's been a lot of discussion about how tall to make the new I-5 replacement bridge to avoid ship collisions, since the bridge would not have a movable middle section. But keep in mind the cargo ship in Baltimore crashed into a bridge support and that ship was enormous. In fact, engineers reviewing the crash say no bridge pier could withstand being hit by a ship that size. I'm told about the only place you'd see a ship that size here would be near the Astoria Megler Bridge near the port of Astoria. That bridge does have concrete bumpers near its supports. Now, keep in mind, too, that anybody connected with the bridges in our area is keeping a close eye on the investigation as to what happened in Baltimore and plans to make any changes depending on what's found out. Live on Hayden Island, Lisa Balick, Point Six News.